In this video, I'll discuss your pension bridge benefit and the way it works with Canada Pension Plan and Quebec Pension Plan. Did you know that your bridge benefit is temporary and it stops when you turn 65? Did you also know that you can receive CPP or QPP as early as a 60 with a decrease and as late as a 70 with an increase without affecting the value or duration of your bridge benefit? Hi everyone, my name is Joseph L. Chakia from Business in 10. Please subscribe to this channel and hit the bell button. This way you'll get notified when I release the next video. And if you find this video useful, please share it with your colleagues and give me the thumbs up. If you want to know more about us, please visit our website businessin10.com. I left you the link in the description section. At Business in 10, we help you with life planning, such as financial planning, estate planning, and retirement planning. We have multiple courses that you will find very useful. We offer a course on the public service pension plan. This video covers bridge benefits, which is a very small part of the public service pension plan course. We highly recommend that you take the full course so that you get to know your pension. Your pension is the most important part of your financial well-being during retirement. I left you the link to the course in the description section below. We also provide retirement planning courses. These courses help you plan for life and for retirement. They are given by our team of professionals. These retirement planning courses are very well received by the people that take them. I left you the link to these courses in the description section as well. Let's get started. In this video, I will cover what is a bridge benefit and how it works, bridge benefit relationship with CPP and QPP, we analyze CPP and QPP and calculate the break-even age, which is critical to help you make the right decision on when to take CPP or QPP. Please watch this video until the end so that you can get the real value out of this information. The bridge benefit is a temporary pension benefit which is designed to provide you with a relatively stable pension income over the course of your retirement. You receive the bridge benefit until you turn 65. At that time, the bridge benefit will stop. Well, you may want to ask why it stops. Here's the answer. Your pension plan is coordinated with Canada Pension Plan and Quebec Pension Plan. When CPP and QPP were introduced in 1966, most Canadian employers offering a pension plan for their employees decided to coordinate the new CPP and QPP with their pension plans so that their employees would not have to set aside a greater proportion of their salary for retirement savings. Because contributions are coordinated, benefits must be coordinated as well. Because of the coordination of the benefits, the bridge benefit stops once you reach age 65, which is the age when CPP or QPP benefits normally begin. CPP and QPP changed since 1966. Now you can take CPP or QPP earlier than 65 with a decrease or later than 65 with an increase. This change in CPP and QPP does not impact your bridge benefit. I will cover that later in this video. Also, if you start receiving CPP or QPP disability pension, the bridge benefit stops. Okay, let me show you how the bridge benefit works with CPP and QPP. So let's say a plan member wants to retire before the age of 65. In this case, they will receive the bridge benefit and a lifetime pension. I will not be covering the lifetime pension in this video or how you calculate the bridge benefit and the lifetime pension. I want to stay focused on the bridge benefit and how it works with CPP and QPP. I highly recommend, however, that you take the public service pension plan course or the retirement planning course. All of this and much more is covered in these courses. I left you the link in the description section below. The bridge benefit will stop when you turn 65 because as I mentioned in the previous slide, traditionally you would be eligible to receive an unreduced CPP or QPP at age 65. And your pension is coordinated with CPP and QPP. 
So theoretically, the bridge benefit is replaced by the unreduced CPP or QPP when you turn 65, and you will not have any impact on your monthly revenue. As long as you choose to take CPP or QPP at age 65. CPP and QPP, however, have changed since 1966, and now you can get them earlier with a decrease or you can get them later with an increase. We will discuss this in the next couple of slides. Now, if you become disabled and are entitled to a disability pension under the CPP or QPP before you reach age 65, the bridge benefit will end immediately. It is important to know that the bridge benefit will not necessarily be equal to the amount paid by CPP or QPP. The bridge benefit is based on your pensionable employment only. While you may have contributed to CPP or QPP for many years outside of your pensionable employment. As we discussed earlier, CPP and QPP have changed since 1966. And now Canadians that contributed to CPP or QPP are eligible to collect them as early as a 60 with a decrease or defer them as late as a 70 with an increase. Applying early, waiting until 65 or deferring CPP or QPP benefits will affect the amount payable from CPP or QPP, but it does not change the amount of the bridge benefit. Okay, let's see what happens if you choose to take CPP or QPP earlier than age 65 with a reduction. The reduction of CPP and QPP is 0.6% per month or 7.2% annually. This reduction is forever. Once you choose to take CPP or QPP early with a reduction, you can't change this decision later. Okay, let me show you a scenario. Let's say a plan member chooses to retire before age 65, also chooses to take CPP or QPP as early as age 60. As a result, CPP or QPP will be reduced by 36%. As we discussed earlier, this member will receive the bridge benefit and the lifetime pension because they are retiring before age 65. And at age 60, will start receiving the reduced CPP or QPP. This plan member will notice an increase of their total monthly income from 60 to 65 because for these five years they are receiving the lifetime pension, the bridge benefit, and the reduced CPP or QPP. Then they will notice a substantial decrease of their total monthly income from age 65 onwards because the bridge benefit will stop at age 65 and the lifetime pension and the reduced CPP or QPP will continue. Please notice the decision to start receiving CPP or QPP earlier did not impact the bridge benefit, amount, or duration. Okay, now let's see what happens if a plan member chooses to take CPP or QPP later than age 65 with an increase. If a plan member wants to retire before age 65, they can also choose to begin receiving their CPP or QPP pension after age 65 the CPP or QPP will be increased by 0.7% monthly or 8.4% annually. So let's say a plan member chooses to retire before age 65, also chooses to receive CPP or QPP at age 70. As a result, CPP or QPP will be increased by 42%. As we discussed earlier, this member will receive the bridge benefit and the lifetime pension because they are retiring before age 65. Now at age 65, the bridge benefit will stop and the lifetime pension will continue. Please notice that at age 65, this plan member will have a substantial decrease in their monthly income because the bridge benefit stops at age 65 and they chose to collect CPP or QPP at age 70. So they have to be able to live on only the lifetime pension for the five years 65 to 70. Now at age 70, they will start receiving the increased CPP or QPP. And as you can see, the monthly income will be substantially increased from age 70 onwards. Please notice the decision to start receiving CPP or QPP later did not impact the bridge benefit amount or duration. To help you with the decision on when you should start receiving CPP or QPP, meaning do you want to start receiving CPP or QPP earlier than age 65, at 65, or should you defer it 
and take it after 65. To help you with this decision, I did the break-even age calculation. I believe the break-even age calculation is one of the key points to help you make the right decision. I will show you that in the next couple of slides. If you are finding this video helpful, please share it with your colleagues and please take the public service pension plan course or the time planning course. In these courses, we cover this information and much more. These courses will put your mind at ease and will help you plan for now and for the future. We highly recommend that you take these courses in these courses, we cover the pension plan, financial planning, tax planning, estate planning, transition to retirement, and much more. All of which are important information that you need to plan for life and retirement. I left you the link to these courses in the description section below. These are approved courses and your management pays for them. Let's look at CPP, QPP, break-even calculation, age 60 versus a 65. The person that wants to take CPP or QPP at a 60 is represented by the blue line. And the person that wants to take CPP or QPP at a 65 is represented by the red line. Let's assume that CPP or QPP at a 65 is $1,000 per month. And if you want to take CPP or QPP early, the benefit will be reduced by 7.2% annually. And if you want to take it as early as a 60, the reduction will be 36%. So the $1,000 per month at a 65 becomes $640 per month at a 60. So the person in blue is collecting $640 per month from a 60. And the person in red is collecting $1,000 per month from a 65. Both people will accumulate the same amount of money by the intersection point where the blue line meets the red line. And that point is the break-even age, which is between 73 and 74. According to Statistics Canada, life expectancy is 85 years. This is where the graph stops. Okay, let's analyze this graph. If you start collecting CPP or QPP at age 60, you would have five years head start. But if you wait for five years and start collecting CPP or QPP at age 65, you would catch up by age 74 and then you will be ahead for 11 years until age 85. So the question becomes, do you want to have a head start for five years or do you want to be financially ahead for 11 years later on? This is your decision to make. Now let's look at the break-even calculation A65 versus A70. The person that wants to take CPP or QPP at A65 is represented by the blue line. And the person that wants to take CPP or QPP at A70 is represented by the red line. Let's assume that CPP or QPP at A65 is $1,000 per month. And if you want to delay taking CPP or QPP, it will be increased by 8.4% annually. And if you want to take it as late as age 70, the increase will be 42%. So the $1,000 per month at age 65 becomes $1,420 per month at age 70. So the person in blue is collecting $1,000 per month from age 65. And the person in red is collecting $1,420 per month from age 70. Both people will accumulate the same amount of money by the intersection point where the blue line meets the red line. And that point is the break-even age, which is between 81 and 82. According to Statistics Canada, life expectancy is 85 years. This is where the graph stops. Okay, let's analyze this graph. If you start collecting CPP or QPP at age 65, you would have five years start. And if you take CPP or QPP at age 70, it will take you 12 years to catch up by age 82, and you have three years advantage at the end, 82 to 85. And please remember, as a recipient of a pension plan, the bridge benefit will stop at age 65, which means you have to be able to live on only the lifetime pension from 65 to 70. So the question becomes, do you want to have an advantage of having more money 
for 17 years early on or having more money for three years later on. It is your decision to make. Okay, let's summarize. If you choose to take CPP or QPP at age 60, instead of 65, the break-even age would be 74. If you choose to take CPP or QPP at age 70, instead of 65, the break-even age would be 82. To make this decision, it would depend on your financial situation and how long you think you will live. According to Statistics Canada, life expectancy is 85 years. So, if you need the money, the decision is easy. Take CPP or QPP as soon as you need the money. It could be as early as age 60. But if you don't need the money, it could be worth it to wait and get more money later. And if you want to keep things simple, take your CPP or QPP at age 65. If you decide to start receiving CPP or QPP, it is recommended that you apply six months in advance. And please remember, this benefit is taxable. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please share it with your colleagues. If you have questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below. I highly recommend that you take the retirement planning course and the public service pension plan course. The links for these courses are in the description section below. These are approved courses and management pays for these courses. Please subscribe to this channel and hit the bell button. This way you'll get notified when I release the next video. Joseph here and see you next time.